after binomial theorem the next obvious step is multinomial theorem now in multinomial we'll have terms like x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus xr and whole to the power n where this n is positive integral index now how do we write summation or how do we write expansion for multinomial theorem so a general expansion for multinomial theorem is expressed as so i'll take this x1 maybe this x1 to the power a1 x2 to the power a2 and xr to the power ar now what about the coefficient of this term so we write this coefficient as factorial n divided by factorial a1 factorial a2 and factorial ar and we can express it as a summation of all the terms where each of this ai is greater than or equal to 0 and ai is an integer and also the most important one is a1 plus a2 plus ar and it should be equals to n so it looks little complicated but then uh, see we, we have to think that when we are expanding the series x1 plus x2 plus xr to the power n then the first and foremost condition is all these powers a1 a2 and ar they have to be integers or they should be zero or greater than zero so we are looking for positive integral index and the sum of all these powers a1 plus a2 plus ar it should be n and we can get the coefficient as factorial n upon factorial a1 factorial a2 and factorial ar so we also say this is the general term of the expansion so if i have to write general term so that's a general term in the multinomial expansion so now there can be two questions first either they'll ask you to write general term of any multinomial expansion or using general term we have to work out some problems and the second problem that we generally see in multinomial theorem is number of distinct terms now for number of distinct terms we have two conditions and the first condition is when each of these variables x1 x2 x3 and xr they are unrelated or they are different variables if these variables are different then number of terms is given by n plus r minus 1 see r minus 1 so number of distinct terms in the multinomial expansion of x1 plus x2 plus xr to the power n is n plus r minus 1 see r minus 1 when these terms x1 x2 x3 and xr they are distinct and they are not related so they are different variables say for example suppose if i say there is a multinomial expansion of a plus b plus c to the power 7 so a question may be find the coefficient of term containing a to the power 3 b to the power 2 c to the power 2 so here i need to write the coefficient of this term now if i look at these powers then 3 plus 2 plus 2 which is 7 so which is in fact equal to n so x1 plus x2 plus x3 it should be equals to n and each of these numbers should be uh, either 0 or a positive integer now in this case its coefficient is given by factorial n upon factorial a1 factorial a2 and factorial ar so i can say this term is given by factorial n which in this case is 7 factorial 7 divided by what is the index of a 3 factorial 3 index of b factorial 2 index of c factorial 2 and then it will be simply a cube b square and c square so the coefficient of this term is simply factorial 7 upon factorial 3 factorial 2 and factorial 2 now what about this one find the coefficient of the term containing a b to the power 4 and c now in this case when i look at these parts the parts are 1 plus 4 plus 1 which is 6 and which is not equal to n so if the sum of the if, if the sum of the parts is not equal to n then that term will not be there in the expansion so in this case simply i'll say the coefficient of the term containing a b to the power 4 into c is simply 0 so if the sum of powers is not equal to n then that term is not present in that multinomial expansion now the third question can be find the number of terms in the expansion so number of terms is given by 
n plus r minus 1, c r minus 1. Now in this case, what is the value of n? n is 7, r, that is the number of variables. So there are three separate variables. So the value of r is simply 3. So number of terms is given by 7 plus 3 minus 1, c, 3 minus 1, which is 9c2. So in this expansion, there will be 9c2 terms, which is 36 terms. So there will be 36 distinct terms in the expansion of a plus b plus c to the power 7. So this is how we generally use multinomial theorem. So let us take another question. And the question is, find the coefficient of x to the power 8 in the expansion of 1 plus x square minus x cubed to the power 9. Now, a similar question we have done using binomial theorem. Now, this term we'll try and attend this question using multinomial theorem. So, what I'll do is I'll write its general term. So, maybe I'll say it is some t or tr or something, right? So, I'll say this general term. So, this is 1 to the power n1, x squared to the power n2, and minus x cubed to the power n3, where this value of n1 plus n2 plus n3 it should be equals to n, which in this case is 9, and then it will be factorial 9 upon factorial n1, factorial n2, and factorial n3. Now we look at what are the combination of the values of n1, n2, and n3, with which I can get this x to the power 8. Now one of the possible combination is, we have x square. Now x square to the power 4 is simply 8, so I will take n2 is 4 and then there should be no x to the power 3 so then it should be 0 and then n1 plus n2 plus n3 should be 9 then the value of n1 is simply 5 so this is one possibility another possibility is now this is 2 and this number it should also be even right so what I can do is I can take this as 2 so here I'll get x to the power 6 now 6 plus 2 is 8 so here I'll take 1 now 1 plus 2 is 3 9 minus 3 is 6 so the second possibility is when the value of n1 is 6, value of n2 is 1 and value of n3 is 2. And I don't see any other possibility. So there are two ways with which I can get the coefficient of x to the power 8. Now in this case, the coefficient that I'll get is factorial 9 upon factorial 5, factorial 4, factorial 0. And here will be 1 to the power 5 and x square to the power 4 and minus x cubed to the power 0 and in this case it will be factorial 9 upon factorial 6, factorial 1, factorial 2 and then it will be 1 to the power 6, x square to the power 1 minus x cube whole square. So here this term will be factorial 9, factorial 5, factorial 4 x to the power 8 and here it will be factorial 9, factorial 6, factorial 2, x to the power 8. Now we are looking for coefficient of x to the power 8. So I will add them. So when I will add them, so the coefficient of x to the power 8 will be factorial 9 upon factorial 5, factorial 4 plus factorial 9 upon factorial 6, factorial 2 and this can be worked out. So eventually it will be 378. So, the coefficient of x to the power 8 in the expansion is 378. So, we can solve it using binomial theorem as we have done previously and we can also solve it using this multinomial theorem. Find the number of rational terms in the expansion of under root 2 plus cube root of 3 plus 6 root of 5 to the power 10. Right? So, what I'll do is again I'll write its general term. So, its general term I'll write it as under root 2 to the power n1 cube root of 3 to the power n2 and 6 root of 5 to the power n3 where n1 plus n2 plus n3 again it should be equal to n which is 10 in this case and this coefficient will be given by factorial 10 factorial n1 factorial n2 and factorial n3 so I'll also write it as factorial 10 factorial n1 factorial n2 factorial n3 and then I'll write it as 2 to the power n1 by 2, 3 to the power n2 by 3 and 5 to the power n3 by 6. Now in order to get a rational term then 
This n1 should be either 0 or a multiple of 2, n2 should be either 0 or a multiple of 3, and n3 should be either 0 or a multiple of 6. Now, what are the possibility is when this n3 is 0. Now, when this n3 is 0, this n2 is 0, this n1, it has to be 10, and 10 by 2 is 5, which is an integral value, right? So, one of the possibility is when the value of n1 is 10, n2 is 0, and n3 is 0. Another possibility is when n3 is 0, if I take n2 as 3, I get n1 as 7. So, which is like uh, 7 by 2, which is not rational. So, I will discard that. I'll take another one, and which is when I'll take this n2 as 6. So, if I take n2 as 6, n3 as 0, I'll get n1 as 4, and 4 by 2 is integral, right? So, in this case, the value of n1 is 4. So, that's my second possibility. Now, what about when n3 is 0, n2 is 9? Again, 1 by 2, not integral. Now, the third case is when we take value of n3 as 6. So, if I take value of n3 as 6, now I need 4. I cannot get 4 from here, right? So, in this case, the value of n2 has to be 0. And in this case, the value of n1 has to be 4. So, there are three possibilities, either 10, 0, 0, or 4, 6, 0, or 4, 0, 6. So, the number of rational terms in the expansion of this series is simply 3. Now, what if I ask you, what are the number of irrational terms? So, for that, I need to find total number of terms. So, total number of terms is given by, what is n? n is 10. So, 10 plus 3 minus 1, c3 minus 1, which is 12c2. And total number of irrational terms so it will be simply 12 c2 minus 3 so there will be three terms which are rational and there will be 12 c2 minus 3 terms which are irrational in this case so let us take up another example and that is find the coefficient of x bar 7 in the expansion of a 1 plus 3x minus 2x cubed to the power 10 and we are going to solve it using multinomial theorem so i'll write its general term and i can write its general term as uh, factorial 10 and then I'll take 1 to the power n1, 3x to the power n2 and minus 2x cubed to the power n3. So which is factorial 10 divided by factorial n1, factorial n2 and factorial n3. Now I'll have to look at all possible combinations of n1, n2 and n3. So I'll take n1, then n2 and then n3. Now one of the possibility is uh, where the value of n1 plus n2 plus n3, the sum of these indices should be 10. Now case 1, if I will take this n3 as 0. Now what I need is, I need coefficient of x to the power 7. So this power needs to be 7. So I will take n2 as 7 and because n1 plus n2 plus n3 is 10, so that will give me the value of n1 as simply 3, right? Now the second possibility is, Suppose if I take this value as 3, right? So this is 3. Now I need 4 to make it 7, right? So it will be 4 and 5. So this one should be 5. Now the third one is if I take this value as 2. So this is 6. I need 1. So this is 1. Now 10 minus 3, which is 7. So the third one is the value of n1 should be 7. So what is this term? So I'll write this term as factorial 10, factorial 3, factorial 7, factorial 0, 1 to the power 3, 3x three to the power 7, minus 2x cubed to the power 0. This term will be factorial 10, factorial 5, factorial 4, factorial 1, 1 to the power 5, 3x to the power 4, minus 2x cubed to the power 1, and this one will be factorial 10, factorial 7, factorial 1, factorial 2, 1 to the power 7, 3x to the power 1, minus 2x to the power 2. So if I just write the coefficient, then the coefficient of x to the power 7 will be, so here will be factorial 10, factorial 3, factorial 7, and this is 3 to the power 7, and then minus 2 to the power, zero, minus 2 to the power 0 will be 1, right? So I won't write it plus factorial 10, factorial 5, factorial 4, and here will be 3 to the power 4, and then minus 2, and again will be factorial 10, factorial 7, factorial 2, 
and here will be 3 into minus 2 square simply will be 4. Now you can solve it, right? So I don't want to get into the calculation part. So do the calculation yourself and get the answer as 62640. Now there is one thing that I want to clarify when it comes to number of distinct terms in a multinomial expansion. So suppose we have a multinomial expansion which says a plus b plus c plus d to the power 6. Now in this case, we have to find number of distinct terms and I'll assume these each of this a, b, c and d, they are separate variables, right? So here I know that formula is n plus r minus 1, c r minus 1 and we actually get this formula from uh, permutations and combinations when we'll study solution of integral solutions of linear equations. So which is n plus r minus 1, c r minus 1. Now in this case, value of n is 6, value of r is 4. So if I have to find number of terms, so there'll be 6 plus 4 minus 1, c 4 minus 1, so there'll be 9c3 and 9c3 is 9873232. So this is 4, 3. So there'll be 84. So there'll be 84 distinct terms in the expansion of a plus b plus c plus d to the power 6. Now let us take another question, which is uh, find the number of distinct terms in the expansion of 1 plus 3x plus 3x square plus x cubed to the power 6. Now here suppose this is a, this is b, this is c, this is d and this is n is again 6. So if I use the formula again, I'll get number of distinct terms as 84. But if I look closely then this 1 plus 3x plus 3x square plus x cube is in fact nothing but it's a formula for a cube plus b cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square. So I can actually write it as so 1 plus x whole cube to the power 6 and here will be 1 plus x to the power 18. Now it becomes a binomial expression and we know that in case of a plus b to the power n number of distinct terms is given by n plus 1. So in this series the number of distinct terms is not 84. Number of distinct terms is simply 19. So that is the reason every time I'm telling you like we can use this formula when each of these variables that they're, they're separate or they're distinct because a, b, c, d if they're distinct variables then we get the answer as 84. Now in this case when we have all 1 x, x square and x square is the same variable x that we are, we are getting every time right. Now in this case suppose if I have to find any specific term maybe b to the power 6 so then it'll be a to the power 0, c to the power 0 d to the power 0. So it will be only a unique term. So it will be only one term that will have b to the power 6. But in this case, suppose if I want to get x to the power 6, then I may get x to the power 6 from here. I may get it from x to the power 4 and x square, x square and x to the power 4, x to the power 3, x square and x. So lot many terms, they'll just combine to form this one distinct term, which is x to the power 6. So that formula is only applicable in the case when all the four variables are distinct. If they have the same variable, then number of terms will, will be much less than what is given in that formula. So I'll take another example. Say, for example, find the number of terms in the expansion of x cubed plus 1 upon x cubed plus 1 whole to the power 100. Now I cannot use this formula, which is n plus r minus 1, cr minus 1, just because these variables, they're same. Like this is x and again, it's some power of x, right? So I cannot use the same formula. Now, how do we find number of terms in this expansion? Now, what I know is, what is the highest power of x possible in this case? The highest power of x possible in this case will be x to the power 300 and then every time there will be some power of x cube, it will be multiplied with some other power of x to the power 1 upon x cube. So these powers, they will get reduced. So there will be some coefficient, right? So I will write maybe a0 and then maybe a1 and then it will be again x to the power. So 300 minus 3, so there will be 297 and then again it will be some x to the power 294. So this is how it will continue and then we will have one term where we will have x to the power 0 because this series will continue up to x to the power 0 and then it will be 1 upon x cube, 1 upon x to the power 6 and eventually it will be 1 upon x to the power 300. So all these powers of x they will spread from x to the power 300 to 1 upon x to the power 300 and between any two successive parts, there will be a difference of two terms. So what is the total number of terms in this expansion? So we'll have 100 terms here from 1 to 300. We'll also have 100 terms there from 3 to 300. And then I'll have this one term where there's no power of x, that is x to the power 0. So the total number of terms will be 
201. So in this expansion, the number of terms will be 201. Now there is another formula in multinomial theorem which we generally don't use but then because it is mentioned in the book so I'll just mention it briefly and it is to find the greatest coefficient in the multinomial expansion of a1 plus a2 plus a m to the power n. So here the index is n and number of terms it is m. So the greatest coefficient in this multinomial expansion is given by factorial n upon factorial q to the power n minus r and factorial q plus 1 to the power r. Now, how do we get this Q and R? So where Q is a quotient and R is a remainder when N is divided by M. So all I need to do is, I need to divide this N with M and I need to find its quotient and I need to find its remainder. So in this case, greatest multinomial coefficient will be given by factorial N divided by factorial Q to the power M minus R and Q plus one factorial to the power R. Now say for example, so it says find the greatest coefficient in the multinomial expansion of a plus b plus c plus d to the power 15. Now in this case the value of n is 15. What is the value of m? m is simply 4. So now when n is divided by m, so this is 4 and this is 15. So here in this case the value of q is 3 and the value of r is also 3. So the greatest multinomial coefficient will be factorial n which is simply factorial 15 upon that is factorial q q here is 3 right so it will be factorial 3 to the power m minus r so 4 4 minus 3 will be 1 and then factorial q plus 1 so q plus 1 is 4 so there will be factorial 4 to the power r and r in this case is 3 so it will be factorial 15 upon factorial 3 factorial 4 whole q now I got this interesting question from one of my students and the question is if an examination has 20 questions for each question the marks that can be obtained are either minus 1, 0 or 4 and if S is the set of possible total marks that a student can score in an examination then we need to find total number of elements in set S. So that is if in a question, a student can get either minus 1 or 0 or plus 4 and there are 20 such questions. What are the possibilities of total marks that this student can score? So one way of solving this question is for each question, we know there are three possibilities. Either a student will score minus 1 or 0 or 4 and we can express it by this simple polynomial which is either a student will score 0. So which is represented by this term x to the power 0 or minus 1 or 4. So that is for each question there are three possibilities and which are 1, 1 upon x plus x to the power 4. So total number of ways of scoring on this question will be 1 plus 1 upon x plus x to the power 4 to the power 20. Now in order to find all possible total marks that a student can score, we need to find number of distinct terms in this expansion. Number of distinct terms in the given expansion. Now how do we find number of distinct terms in this expansion? So I cannot use that formula n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 because it is applicable only when the variables are unrelated or distinct. So what I will do is I will write this expansion 1 plus 1 upon x plus x to the power 4 to the power 20 as x to the power 4 plus 1 plus 1 upon x to the power 20 and if I will use binomial expansion I can write r varies from 0 to 20 20 CR x to the power 4 20 minus R and 1 plus 1 upon x to the power R. Now if I will expand this series, I can write the series as 20 C0 x to the power 80 1 plus 1 upon x to the power 0 20c1 
x to the power 76 1 plus 1 upon x 20 c2 x to the power 72 1 plus 1 upon x whole square 20 c3 x to the power 68 1 plus 1 upon x to the power 3 and then plus this summation where r varies from 4 to 20 x to the power 20 minus r into 1 plus 1 upon x to the power r. Now here I'm not interested in the expansion of this series. So what I'm interested in is number of distinct terms. So what I'll do is I'll just count what are the powers of x that will be present in this expansion. So this expansion will have x to the power 80. Then here we'll have x to the power 76. And if I'll multiply it with 1 upon x, I'll get x to the power 75. Then from this one, now 1 plus 1 upon x, it'll have 1, 1 upon x and 1 upon x square. So here I'll get x to the power 72, x to the power 71, x to the power 70. Now with 68, I'll have 1, 1 upon x, 1 upon x square and 1 upon x cube. So here I'll get x to the power 68, x to the power 67, x to the power 66, x to the power 65. And here after we know that this r is greater than 4. So it will contain these four consecutive terms. So 1 upon x to the power 0, x to the power 1, x to the power 2, x to the power 3. So from here we'll get all the consecutive powers of x. So starting from 68, we'll get all the consecutive powers of x up to this 1 plus 1 upon x to the power 20. And there I'll get x to the power minus 17, x to the power minus 18 x to the power minus 19 and x to the power minus 20. So in this expansion, I'll have these terms starting from x to the power minus 20 to x to the power 68. And then we'll have these six more terms. So now I'll need to count number of distinct terms in this expansion. So I know that from 80 to 20, it'll be total 80 and then plus we also have x to the power 0 and then plus 20. So that's 101. And then minus what are the missing terms? Missing terms here are 77, 78, 79, 73, 74, and then x to the power 69. So that is, there are six terms which are missing. So 101 minus six, so that is 95. So the total number of elements in set S is 95. So there are 95 different possibilities in which the student can score in an examination.